What we're going to be looking at here are intangible assets and we're specifically going to look, be looking at a purchase patent here and we're going to have impairment on this patent. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be calculating the impairment and looking at how we'd record this impairment. And for our example here, Corporation A during 20X4 spent $340,000 on research and development costs here and Corporation A had previously purchased a patent A here on 7120X1 for $150,000. So they bought this from an, uh, an outside party here for their own use here. So, And then it had a useful life here at that time of 10 years. As a resu result here of reduced demands for the products protected by this patent A here, a possible impairment here in patent A's value may have occurred here on 123120X4. So we're going to be testing for that and see if we've got an impairment here. Okay, so these are the rules of the road here for impairment testing. Again, for intangible assets. These are the steps that we'd uh, de uh, follow here to determine whether there is an impairment. Number one, you review events and changes. Uh, and we've we've got, we're, this is what we're going to be looking at here for this impairment here. We're going to be looking at the fair value if it's less than the book value here. And if it is, we're going to have an impairment. So again, we're looking at, we're going to be looking at a limited life intangible here. So it's, there's two tests that we have to do on that. Um, we're going to perform a recoverability test. That's the sum of expected future cash flows undiscounted. If it's less than the carrying amount of the asset, then you're going to have an impairment. Now, this is where it fails the test here. Uh, again, the future net cash flows are less than the carrying value. You'd recognize an impairment loss here. Now, there would be no impairment here if the future net flow cash flows here are greater than the carrying value. And point three here, if the recoverability test indicates that an impairment has occurred, then a loss is computed here. So uh, for our impairment loss, this is the amount by which the carrying amount exceeds the fair value. Now the fair value is measured based on market value. Now if no active market exists, then use the present value of the expected future cash flows to determine the fair value. So that's our case here. We have no active market here uh, on this patent, so we're going to have to use the present value of the expected future cash flows here to determine the fair value. Again, an impairment loss, that's simply the carrying value less its fair value. So let's go look at our example here again. Um, we are given here the expected future cash flows here on this patent here. Um, so we'll be testing for our impairment. 20x5 uh, here to 20x6 for these, or 7 here for these three years. We have got a 20,000 per year here of cash flows. So what we have to do is in this case, since there's no active market, then we use the present value of the expected future cash flows to determine the fair value. So we're going to use a discount rate here of 8% and we're going to discount these $20,000 amounts back here at year end. So the present value discounted back here those uh, for $20,000 per year here for three years at 8% is equal to $51,541. So that's the present value discounted back of these expected cash flows. Now oh, we have to also calculate our amortization here to date. So the useful life was 10 years to start with here and 12 months per year so we got a total of 120 months so uh, we'd amortize it here. Uh, we asked, amortize the purchase cost here, this patent since it was purchased here, $150,000 purchase cost divided by the 120 months, so we're going to get $1,250 per month. So what we've amortized to this point here uh, for our impairment testing and at the end of the year here of 20X4, we have for 20X1 we had six months here at $1,250 per month and then for the next two years, 20X2 and 20X3, we had full 12 months per year. So a total month a total month of amount of amortization is 30 months times $1,250 50 per month gives us $37,500 that we've amortized here on this patent. Okay, so let's go and look at our calculations here now to determine any loss here. And as these are this is the patent here as of the, the 123120X4. So our patent cost here was $150,000. We have accumulated amortization here of $37,500. So the book value here is the net amount between those book value or carrying value here. $112,500. Simply the $150,000 less the accumulated amortization here to date. Now our future net cash flows here, those were the um, undiscounted amount here was $60,000 or we had $20,000 uh, per year here for three years. Now uh, the fair value, we had to calculate that, was that was the present value of these uh, future 
cash flows here. We determined that to be $51,541. So now let's look at our testing here. Um, first for the um, recoverability test in this case here. So we, what we'd be looking at the future net cash flows here, the undiscounted net cash flows here, those are that $60,000 amount less than the carrying value here, is less than the carrying value here of $112,500. So we have failed the recoverability test in this case. Next to calculate our impairment loss here. Well, and that's as of 1231-20x4 here, the end of the 20x4 year here. So the book value of the carrying value is $112,500, uh, and we'd be uh, comparing that to the fair value here. So we uh, subtract that, the less fair value from that, $51,541. We're going to have the impairment loss here of $60,959 here. Now remember here, um, this fair value here is Base, was based on the discounted cash flows in this case. Okay, so let's go back here and look at this. So uh, our loss on impairment, that was $60,959. That was simply the book value at that time, less the fair value here. And remember the fair value was those discounted cash flows in this case. So we have a new carrying amount here, and that would be the fair value on this patent. That was $51,000. $541. Now, the useful life that's remaining here, or remember we've got uh, four years remaining, 20x4 here through 20x7 here, because we were looking at impairment here at the beginning of the year here in 20x4. So there's four years remaining. You divide that into the new carrying amount here at a fair value of 51541 and you're going to get an amortization expense here of $12,885 per year. So that would be for the next four years. That would be our new amortization expense here on this patent. And it would be just looking here for 20x4 here. That would be the amortization expense. Okay, now let's go and we'll look at how we'd record this patent here on our balance sheet and on our income statement. Now to record this patent here, the impairment of this patent and the amortization and capitalization of this patent. Now remember here, uh, to make a point here, we had some R&D costs here, or expense here that was incurred here uh, during the year here at 20X4. Now even if we spent some of those research and developments against this patent, we would still not be capitalizing any, uh, any of those amounts against the patent here. R&D expenses here are uh, are expensed as they're incurred here. So for this year here, we had $340,000 worth of research and development uh, costs here. So let's just say we'd credit cash for that amount here, and then we'd be debiting that amount here, $340,000 uh, as R&D expense here on our income statement, even if some of those expenses here went against the patent. They just all get expensed out as they're incurred. Now for this patent itself here, we capitalize the patent at the purchase cost here and amortize it over the useful life here, the patent. And what we're going to be looking at here is also recording this loss here in the patent and the new carrying value or book value on this patent. So uh, at the um, We'd have this asset account here as a patent on our balance sheet when we purchased this patent here in 7120X1, and we would have debited for the cost here, $150,000. Now, uh, when we recognize an impairment on this patent, we're going to be uh, closing that out here. We're going to be crediting it for the full amount of the cost that we have here, $150,000. And now we were going to be debiting or re -record, uh, recapitalizing this patent here at its new fair value, which was those discounted cash flows of the future cash flows here. And we determined that to be $51,541. So we would be debiting our patent here at, for that new carry value here at that impairment date here. And then also we have the amortization of the patent here. Well, uh, for the uh, first three years here, 20X1, 20X3, we recorded them here to be a total amount here of $31,500. So uh, at the impairment date here, this patent, what we did is we just closed those out again here. We uh, closed the accumulated amortization out here and, and debit that here, close it out here for $37,500. And then we'd be debiting or uh, are increasing our impairment loss here on our income statement here on this patent here. Debit that here as a loss here on the income statement, impairment loss on the patent, $60,959. So what happens here if you just look at our debits and credits here? So what we had here 
we had ended up with a credit amount here of $150,000 in our patent account when we closed it out here at the uh, cost that our carrying cost here uh, and then the balancing amounts here would have gone against our uh, debt uh, impairment loss here for sixty thousand um, nine hundred fifty nine dollars here and then we would also had another debit here where we uh, set our new patent carrying amount here at fifty one thousand five hundred and four dollars and then plus the other debit here of thirty one uh, thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars for closing out our accumulated depreciation would balance with the credit amount here of one hundred fifty thousand dollars here on our patent so this is how we'd record this impairment loss here we'd have to write take and uh, write it off our books here the original cost recorded at the new cost that we have on the patent here and then we'd also have to reduce our uh, close out our amortization here that we had on the patent here up until that date here and then for the next year here let's just say 20x4 um, since we uh, recognize this loss here in the beginning of the year here for 20x4 we just take our new amortization expense here for the year here and we'd be doing that here for the next a number of years 20x5 through 20x7 here of twelve thousand eight hundred and eighty five dollars so we'd amortize it at that amount here and then we'd recognize it on our income statement here as patent expense for this amortization here debit that here for twelve thousand eight hundred and eighty five dollars so that takes care of our uh, uh, capitalizing amortizing here and recording this loss here on this uh, patent here and just remember here, uh, expense and R&D costs, even if they were used against your patent here, you expense them as they're incurred, they're not capitalized. And then to record any uh, losses here or, or what we would do here in this in this case of impairment, and remember you have to remove off your costs off your books here for, or what was sitting on a, in your accumulated depreciation and your uh, what you'd have capitalized in your patent up until that date, and then you'd be recognized on the loss here, and then you'd recapitalize it at the new uh, fair value, or in this case the present value of those future cash flows. All right, so that takes care of our patent amortization here and. Uh, loss here that we had due to the impairment on this patent. And again, it was up for a purchase patent.